Hey folks, welcome back to the Greg Luchak Show and the part four of the, the Book of Dubé, Kings in the Royal Gallery. In this episode, I'm going to be ta taking you on an epic journey into the past. Stories about medieval kings, queens, knights, and ladies of the First Order. Have you been to the movies lately? Let me start by uh, taking you through the book. And uh, this is a section of the book. It's under cool fun facts. Many books, plays, and television series and movies have been created with characters based on several of our ancestors from the medieval period by famous authors and playwrights like Shakespeare. Hollywood has produced at least 250 films based on the plays or on characters or plots from, got from plays by Shakespeare. In 1964, Richard Burton, uh, played as Tom Beckett, went head to head with Peter O'Toole, who played King Henry II, the Dubé Dozen's 24th great-grandfather in the movie Beckett. In 1984, The Life and Death of King John, a made-for-TV movie, is an excellent version of one of Shakespeare's lesser-known plays based on the Dubé Dozen's 23rd great-grandfather. In 1995, Mel Gibson came into his own as a director with Braveheart, an account of and the life and times of medieval Scottish patriot William Wallace's struggle to unify his nation against King Henry I of England, the Dubé Dozen's 21st great-grandfather. However, it has been noted that the stories depicted in the film do not accurately represent Edward I. It is nonetheless a fun movie to watch. In 2015, the CBC presented the Stratford Festival. The series has been filming plays since 2015 and plans to continue until 2025. The play in the production of King John, yet another depiction of the Dubé Dozen's 23rd great-grandfather, stars Tom McCannis as King John, Graham Abbey as King Philip, and Sienna McKenna as Lady Constance, and was directed by Tim Carroll. McKenna and McKenna both garnered Canadian Screen Actor nominations, McKenna as Best Actor in a Television Film and or a Miniseries, and McKenna as Best Actress in a Television Film or Miniseries, at the 4th Canadian Screen Actor Awards. In 2018, Outlaw King stars Chris Pine and Stephen Delane. The movie begins in 1304 with Robert the Bruce, played by Chris Pine, his father, James Cosmo, and other Scottish nobles pledging allegiance to England's King Edward I, who was the Dubé Dozen's 21st great-grandfather, who was played by Stephen Delane. A fact check of Outlaw King reveals that the film indeed happened. In 1303, Edward invaded Scotland again. By 1304, the country was under submission and all the leading Scots surrendered to Edward in February of that year, except for William Wallace, who was in hiding. Robert the Bruce and other Scottish nobles had also previously submitted to Edward in 1302, after the English king had embarked on a military campaign through Scotland. So those are just a few stories uh, that's in the book. And we're gonna be going forward now we're going to be talking about the Dubai Dozen's 17th and 18th great-grandmothers who were Prussian princesses. Princess Maria von Bickenbach was born in 1390 in Prussia, currently known as Germany and not to be confused with Russia. Her father, Count Dietrich von Bickenbach, was 35 and her mother, Princess Agnes van Eisenberg Bugengen, was 36. She married Everhard Schenk Van Erbenbach Mikkelslat, that they had one son together. Otto Schenk Van Erbenbach Mikkelslat was born in 1412. Princess Maria died in 1448 at the age of 58. Princess Maria was also the 16th great grandmother to King Albert II of Belgium, who reigned from 1993 until 2013. Here is a little history on our Prussian roots. The name Prussia derives from the old Prussians in the 13th century, the Teutonic Knights, an organized Catholic medieval military order of German crusaders, conquered the lands inhabited by them. In 1308, the Teutonic Knights conquered the region of Parmelia with Gdansk. Their monastic 
state was mostly Germanized through immigration from Central and Western Germany. And in the South, it was Polonized by settlers from Masovia. The second piece of Thorn, 1466, split Prussia into the Western Royal Prussia, a province of Poland, and the Eastern part from 1525 called the Duchy of Prussia, a fief of the crown of Poland up to 1657. The Union of Brandenburg and the Duchy of Prussia in 1618 led to the proclamation of the Kingdom of Prussia in 1701. In this next section, Knights of the Order, several of our great-grandfathers were Knights of the Order of the Golden Fleece. The Order was founded by Philip III, the Good, Duke of Burgundy and Bruges in Flanders in 1430 to commemorate his wedding there to Isabella of Portugal his first chapter was held at Lille in 1431, and in 1432, its seat was fixed at Dijon, the capital of Duché of Burgundy. Dedicated to the Blessed Virgin and to St. Andrew, it was first constituted to have a Grand Master, the Sovereign Duke, and 23 Knights, but membership was substantially increased to 31 and eventually to 51. The order founded to defend the Roman Catholic religion, to up the, the usages of chivalry, and to increase the prestige of the Duke of Burgundy. It was ideally supposed to settle all disputes between the knights, whose actions were to be appraised, commended, and censured at its chapters. The knights had the right to trial by their fellows on charges of rebellion, treason, and heresy. Simon de la Lange, 1405 to 1476, was an Admiral of Flanders from 1436 to 1462. He was made a Knight of the Order of the Golden Fleece in 1431. Simon de la Lange was the Dubé Dozen's 16th great-grandfather. Simon was the second son of Othar, Lord of la Lange and Yolande of Barbican, Lady of Montague. He married Joan of Gavere, Lady of Ascorne, with whom he had two children, Jost, Lord of Montague, and Willem. A little British ancestry, please and thank you. In medieval times, King Edward III was so inspired by tales of King Arthur and the chivalry of the Knights of the Round Table that he set up his own group of honorable knights called the Order of the Garter. The order is regarded as the most prestigious British order of chivalry. Membership of the order is limited to the Sovereign, Prince of Wales, and no more than 24 living members or companions. Many of our ancestors from England were either ladies or lords, knights of the Order of the Garter. Before the order, some were even kings and queens of England, from as far back as 1000 AD, before King John and up through King Henry III and beyond. The order still exists today, some 700 years later. Garter Day. The annual iconic Garter Day procession where the Queen uh, and the Knights process in grand velvet robes Glistening insignia and plumed hats is one of the most traditional ceremonies in the Queen's calendar. Every June, a grand procession of the knights takes place at Windsor Castle, accompanied by a marching band and officers of the order, all in grand ceremonial dress. The day begins with Queen formally investing any new companion with the order's insignia in the throne room of the castle. The Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh entertain the members and officers at a lunch and then all process on foot to a service in St. George's Chapel. There is a short service where any new companions are installed. The Sovereign and members of the Order then return to the upper ward of the castle in carriages and cars. 
Sir Hugh of Courtney, born 1303 to 1377, was a founding member of the Order of the Garter. He was also married to Lady Margaret de Bohan, the Dubé clan's 19th great-grandmother. So, let's talk about the House of Courtney. You can find many Courtney descendants in the Dubé's ancestry, starting with Lady Elizabeth Catherine de Courtney, Dubé Dozen's 14th great-grandmother. The House of Courtney bears its name from two distinct noble families, both of which are descendants from Athon. Athon, the first Lord of Courtney, who was the Seigneur de Courtney, was himself apparently a descendant of the Counts of Sens and from Fairmount, reputed founder of the French monarchy in 420 AD. Athon took advantage of the succession crisis in the Duchy of Burgundy between Otto Willem, Duke of Burgundy, and Robert II of France to capture a piece of land for himself, where he established his own seigneury, a lordship, taking his surname from the town he founded and fortified. So William Courtney, the 15th great uncle of Dubé Dudley, was a supporter of King Henry VII from 1485 to 1509, the first of the Tudors, who made him a knight bachelor on the 25th of November, 1487, at the coronation of Queen Elizabeth. He was a captain in the Royal Army and assisted his father in the defeat of the pretender Perkin Warbeck at the Siege of Exeter in 1497, which secured finally the Tudor succession. However, Sir William fell out of favour with uh, King Henry VII as he discovered that he had joined in the conspiracy to crown Edmund de la Pole, the third Duke of Suffolk, and the last Yorkist claimant. For his complicity, he was imprisoned in the Tower of London in February 1504, and so made incapable of any inheritance. He was released from prison by Henry VIII. Sir William Courtenay was pardoned and restored to his rights and privileges as a sword bearer at the coronation on the 24th of June, 1509. It is a matter of a debate as to whether he lived long enough to have been formally restored to his honours. He married Princess Catherine of York, the sixth daughter of King Edward IV. William and Catherine had three children, an effigy identified by tradition as little chocobal of Margaret Courtenay, who died approximately 1512, an infant daughter of William Courtenay, exists in Coyton Church in Devon. A 19th century brass tablet above is inscribed. Margaret, daughter of William Courtney, Earl of Devon, and the Princess Catherine, youngest daughter of Edward IV, King of England, died at Cologne, choked by a fishbowl, and was buried under the window in the north transept of the church. Despite this, the effigy is incorrect. Margaret, as known by records, was still alive and serving as Princess Mary Tudor, daughter of Henry VIII, on 2nd of July, 1520. There were many knights and ladies of the Order of the Garter. People like Sir Richard Rogers II and his father, Sir John Rogers, preceded by his father, Sir William J. Rogers. There's also Lady Cecile Rogers, who was a Luttrell. Who was, uh, her father was Sir Andrew Luttrell, who had married Lady Margaret Luttrell. There was also Lord John Touche, Sir Edwin Henry Rogers, Sir Thomas Ingenham, and the Ingenham family. They're all part of the House of Court, where you had Sir William de Courtney, Sheriff of Devon, whose father was Philip Courtney of Mulland, and his father was John Lord de Courtney, whose father was Philip de Courtney of Powderdam. Powderdam is actually a castle that's in England that the uh, Courtney family owned. There's also Sir William Bonville, who was the father to Lady Margaret Elizabeth de Bonville. Philip de Courtney of Powderham was the son of Hugh de Courtney, who I talked about earlier, who had married Margaret de Bohan, who was the, the daughter of Humphrey de Bohan, and whose mother was Elizabeth Plantagenet of England. There were also people from the Wheaton family, Sir, Sir Wheaton, Governor of Guernsey in Ireland, Sir William Weston, who was married to Joan Tilden Lay, who was the daughter of Sir John Savage IV, and Lady Stanley, Baroness of Clifton. 
whose parents were Lord Thomas Stanley and Sir John Savage III. So I, I can't go through all of the people that were knights and, uh, and ladies of the Garter, as there were many, but that's just a sampling of a few. And this brings us to the next chapter in, uh, in this segment, the Royal Gallery from the 10th century and beyond. When we start this series of stories of people from the royal family or royal families, because there's several, then we start with Lady Margaret Luttrell. Lady Margaret Luttrell was the Dubai Dozen's 13th great grandmother. Born 1500, died 7th of July, 1580. When Lady Margaret Luttrell was born in 1500, her father, Vice Admiral Sir Thomas Wyndham, was 32, and her mother, Lady Eleanor Scrope, was 30. She married Sir Andrew Luttrell on April 22, 1540. They had 10 children in 23 years. The firstborn was Margaret, born in 1515 in Somerset, England, followed by Eleanor, who was born in 1560. John was born in 1519, followed by Thomas, who was born in 1521. The fifth born was Nicholas in 1523. The sixth born was Lady Cecilia, known as Sicily, was born in 1523 in Grange, Perthshire, Scotland, becoming the Dubay Dozen's 12th great-grandmother. She married Sir Richard Rogers II, who was a Knight of the Order of the Garter. The seventh born was Richard, born in 1526, back in Somerset, England. Eighth born was Andrew in 1530, followed by Elizabeth, born in 1530 as well. The tenth born was Hugh, born in 1533 in Somerset, England. Lady Margaret Luttrell died on July 7, 1580 in East Croxton Head, Somerset, England, having lived a long life of 80 years, and she was also buried there. Next we have Vice Admiral Sir Thomas Wyndham, the Dubai Dozen's 14th great-grandfather. Born 1468 and died 22nd of December 1521. Sir Thomas Wyndham was the son of Sir John Wyndham and Lady Margaret Howard. He married Eleanor Scrope, daughter of Sir Richard Scrope, and Eleanor Washbourne in 1496 at Bentley, Yorkshire, England, and Elizabeth Wentworth, daughter of Sir Henry Wentworth and Anne Say. Sir Thomas Wyndham had three children with Lady Eleanor Scrope. The firstborn was Sir Edmund Wyndham followed by Sir John Wyndham, followed by Lady Margaret Luttrell Wyndham, who I just spoke about earlier, the Dubai Dozen's 13th great-grandmother. Sir Thomas Wyndham later married Liz's Lady Elizabeth Wentworth in 1487. They had one child together, Thomas Wyndham II. This is an excerpt from the will of Eleanor Washburn Scrope, Sir Thomas Wyndham's mother. Item, I bequeath Thomas Wyndham, my son-in-law, a vestment, a mass book, a pair of chalices, three hangings, six cushions of verdor, and all the stuff of my kitchen. Item to my daughter, Eleanor Wyndham, wife of the said Thomas, a gown of black velvet, furred with martyrs, a gown of black cloth, purcelled with a tawny velvet, a counterpoint wrought with three kings of Cologne, and a sparver of green sars. And that's the story of Vice Admiral Sir Thomas Wynne. Next we have Jos de la Lange, the Dubai Dozen's 15th great-grandfather. I mentioned him earlier on, beginning of this segment, when I talked about his father, Simon de la Lange. When Jos de la Lange, Lord of Montague and of Santes, Knight of the Order of the Golden Fleece, was born in 1437 in Chouarice, Oost Vlanderden, Belgium. His father Simon was 32 and his father Jean was 17. He married Jean Bon de la Viville in 1462 in Hanau, Belgium. He died on August 5, 1483 in Utrecht, Netherlands at the age of 46. Jos de la Lange was a noble from Hanoi who filled several important posts in his service of the Burgundian Duke's life. Jos de la Lange was the eldest son of Simon de la Lange. In 1468, Charles the Bold appointed him sovereign bailiff of the county of Flanders. 
1463, he became the Admiral of Flanders. In 1476, he was a member of the Duchal Council of Charles the Bold. From 1477 on, he was Chamberlain at the court of Charles' daughter, Mary of Burgundy. In 1478, he was made a Knight of the Order of the Golden Fleece. When Wolfert VI of Borselin could no longer control the situation in the Holland and Zeeland, Jos was appointed Stadtholder of these regions. He remained a Stadtholder until his death in 1483. Jos de la Lange died at the Siege of Utrecht during the Hook and Cod Wars. Jos de la Lange married Bonnet de Weifel in 1462 and they had five children. The firstborn was Philippot, born about 1460. Next was Charles, born 1466, died 1525, was the first Count of Lalang. Carl de Lalang, born 1470 to 1525, was the Dubai Dozen's 14th great-grandfather. Marguerite was born 1470, died in 1512, and the fifth born was Antoine, born 1480, lived till 1540, who became Lord of Montague and was the first Count of Hogestraten and Columborn. The next story in the Royal Gallery, we have Sir William Bonville, the Dubai Dozen's 16th great-grandfather, who was born in 1392 and died in 1461. Sir William Bonneville was the first Baron of Bonneville, Knight of the Garter and an English nobleman, a soldier and an administrator, and was executed at the Second Battle of St. Albans and was beheaded. Bonneville remained outwardly loyal to Henry VI. He swore allegiance to the king at the Coventry Parliament of 1459, and in the following February he was appointed to a commission to raise the shires of Somerset, Cornwall, and Devon against the attainted Yorkists. Yet he finally revealed his true colours by appearing on the Yorkist side of the Battle of Northampton in July 1460. After witnessing the deaths of both his son and grandson at the debacle at Wakefield on the 30th of December, when York too was, was killed, he joined the Earl of Warwick in London, where in a chapter held on February, uh, February 8, 1461, the two of them were elected Knights of the Garden. The futility of their elevation to the ranks of the military elite was soon made evident. Nine days later, they were defeated by the Queen's forces in the Second Battle of St. Albans. Bonville did not flee after the engagement because the king promised that his life would be sp spared, but he was nonetheless executed on Queen Margaret's orders on the 18th of February. Bonville, described by Bishop Neville, Warwick's brother, as a strenuous cavalier. Sir William married Margaret Gray. They had several children together, Catherine, William, Philippa, James, Margaret, Elizabeth, Joan, and Isabella. Bonville remarried Elizabeth de Courtenay on the 9th of October, 1427, who was the widow of John Harrington, 4th Baron Harrington, who died 11th of February, 1418, and daughter of Edward de Courtenay, the 11th Earl of Devon, after the death of Margaret Gray in 1426. Margaret was the Dubai Dozen's 16th great-grandmother. Bonville's daughter, Margaret, married Sir William de Courtenay uh, 14, about 1428. Uh, looks like uh, died September 1485. He was the son of Sir Philip de Courtenay, becoming the Dubai Dozen's 15th great-grandparents. Very little of the original medieval matter else remains of Bonville's birthplace. This photograph shown here is from the late 14th century. I also want to talk to you about Lady Margaret Elizabeth Courtney. As you can see in the photo of the effigy shown here on the right, the 16th great step-grandmother of the Dubé Dozen, born about 1390 and died 28th of October 1471. The alabaster effigy in the church of St. Capricious, Porlock, of John Harrington, 4th Baron Harrington, and his wife, Elizabeth Courtney, daughter of Edward de Courtney, 3rd Earl of Devon.
The next person I want to talk to you about is Sir Philip de Courtenay, the Doobie Dozen 16th great grandfather. Born 1355, died 1406. Sir Philip de Courtenay of Powderdam, Devon was the founder of the cadet dynasty known as Courtney of Powderdam, seated at the manor of Powderdam. Sir Philip Courtney was the fifth son of eight sons of Hugh Courtney, 10th Earl of Devon, 1303 to 1377, and Margaret de Bohan, daughter of Humphrey de Bohan, 4th Earl of Hereford, by his wife Elizabeth Plantagenet, uh, born 1282 to 1316 daughter of King Edward I. Now, just a little quick story about Margaret de Bohan. Margaret de Bohan was the link that I found in my research that allowed me to discover all the royalty that I'm now telling you and, you know, and finding all these great stories. Uh, when I first found her, she was had very little information, but as I dug deeper, I found the link to her father, King Edward I. Sir Philip de Courtenay, he was known as a rash, angry, and temperamental man, but was skillful in naval and military affairs. Philip served during the Spanish War. He was with Edward the Black Prince at the famous victory of the Battle of Najera. He was knighted before the battle with his brothers, Peter Courtney, Knight of the Garter, and Hugh Courtney, Knight of the Garter. By 1399, Sir Philip was an experienced soldier called upon to suppress the Welsh Revolt. He called up on the commissions of Array. He brought transporters of the soldiers and horses for the 1402 expedition to Brittany and the sailing against the King of Scotland in 1400. Sir Philip was imprisoned in the tower in November 1402 for clerical abuses against the church. On the 29th of November, he was forced to pay a hundred pounds by Sir John Arundel and to Sir John Pearl and Sir William Sturmey, a surety of a thousand pounds. Sir Philip de Courtney married Anne Wake, daughter of Sir Thomas Wake of Blissworth, North Appenshire, by Alice de la Pecho, the daughter of Sir John de Petitchel. They had three sons and two daughters. The first was Richard Courtney, Bishop of Norwich, who was the son and heir. Next was Sir John Courtney, followed by Sir William Courtney, who became the Dubai Dozen's 15th great-grandfather, who married Margaret Bonville Ray, the Dubai Dozen's 15th great-grandmother. I told you about them a little earlier. Followed by Agnes Courtney and Margaret Coode Courtney. In the photo, you can see uh, the photograph of uh, Powderham Castle, Devon, viewed from under the gatehouse, and the arms of the Courtney of Powderdam, which is the official uh, coat of arms, which I actually used portions of that uh, coat of arms when I created the coat of arms for the, the Dubé coat of arms. Now this next story is a very important one. Margaret de Bohan, Countess of Devon, the Dubé does his 19th great grandmother. Born 3rd of April, 1311, died 16th of December, 1391. Now, I just mentioned briefly to her, she was my link to all the research that I found. But this is her story. Lady Margaret Bohan was born on the 3rd of April, 1311, at Col Caldecote, North Hamptonshire, and was the third daughter and seventh child of Humphrey de Bohan, the fourth Earl of Hereford, Lord Constable of England, by his wife, Elizabeth of Rudland, the youngest daughter of King Edward I and Eleanor of Castile. Her paternal grandparents were Humphrey de Bohan, 3rd Earl of Hereford, and Maud de Fane. She, she was named after her maternal step-grandmother, Margaret of France, the second queen consort of Edward I. Margaret was left an orphan shortly before her 11th birthday on the 16th of March, 1322, at the Battle of Boroughbridge. Her father was slain in an ambush by the Welsh. Her mother had died six years previously in childhood. On the 11th of August, 1325, at the age of 14, Lady Margaret married Hugh de Courtney, the future 10th Earl of Devon, 
to whom she had been betrothed since the 27th of September 1314. Her dowry included the manor of Cotterham, their exodus. The marriage agreement was formally made on the 28th of February 1315, when she was not quite four years old. The first Earl of Devon promised that upon the marriage he would bequeath the son and mark it jointly with 400 marks worth of land, assessed at its true value and in a suitable, a suitable place. Margaret assumed the title of Countess of Devon on the 23rd of December 1340. Margaret had eight sons and six daughters that are known of. Three more may possibly exist. The first born was Sir Hugh Courtney, 1326 to 1348, and was a Knight of the Garden, followed by Thomas Courtney, born 1329 to 1381, followed by Sir Edward Courtney, born 1331 to 1371. Then there was Edward Courtney, the 11th Earl of Devon, who died in 1419. The two Edwards are not the same, they're two different people. Followed by Sir Hugh Courtney of Macomb and Brampton, born 1358 and died 1425. Followed by Robert Courtney. Uh, then there was William Courtney, born 1342, died 31st of July, 1396 who was also the Archbishop of Canterbury. Then there was Sir Philip Courtney, who I talked about earlier, born 1355 to 29 July 1406, who was a Knight of the Garter and was the Dubai Dozen's 18th great-grandfather. He was followed by Sir Peter Courtney, died 2nd of February 1405, also a Knight of the Garter. Followed by Humphrey Courtney, who died young, without issue. Margaret de Courtney, the elder, born 1328, died 2nd of August, 1395, was followed by Elizabeth Courtney, who died 7th of August, 1395, who was followed by Catherine Courtney, who died 31st of December, 1399. Then there was Anne Courtney, who was followed by Joan Courtney, and finally, Margaret Courtney, the younger, born about 1342 to, uh, or to 1350 and died after July 1381. In the photo you can see of her effigy, Margaret de Bolha, situated next to that of her husband on a chest tomb in Exeter Cathedral, England. Okay, now we're moving on to the next uh, person. Elizabeth of Rudland was the Dubé Dozen's 20th great-grandmother, born the 7th of August 1282 and died the 5th of May 1360. Elizabeth of Rudland was the 8th and youngest daughter of King Edward I and Queen Eleanor of Castile. Of all her siblings, she was closest to her younger brother, King Edward II, as they were only two years apart in age. In April 1285, A.D. there were negotiations with Forrest V for Elizabeth's brothel to his son, John I, Count of Holland. The offer was accepted and John was sent to England to be educated. On the 8th of January 1297, Elizabeth was married to John at Ipswich. In attendance at the marriage were Elizabeth's sister Margaret, her father, Edward I of England, her brother Edward, and Humphrey de Bohan. After the wedding, Elizabeth was expected to go to Holland with her husband, but she did not wish to go, leaving her husband to go alone. It is recorded that while in Ipswich, the king, in some outburst, threw his daughter's coronet into the fire. A great ruby and, and a great emerald were supplied by Adam the goldsmith, stones lost as a result. Elizabeth spent time traveling through England, accompanied by her father, King Edward I, ending up in Ghent. There they remained for a few months, spending Christmas with her two sisters, Eleanor and Margaret. On the 10th of November, 1299, John died of dysentery, though there were rumors of his murder. No children had been born from the marriage. On the 14th of November, 1302, Elizabeth was married to Humphrey de Bohan, 4th Earl of Hereford, 3rd of Essex, also Constable of England at Westminster Abbey. 
They had 10 children together. Their sixth child, Margaret de Bohan, who I talked about earlier, was a Countess of Devon, became the Dubé Dozen's 19th great-grandmother. Elizabeth died along with her child, Isabel, during childhood. Here is the list of her 10 children. Margaret de Bohan was the firstborn. 1302, died the 7th of February, 1304. Humphrey de Bohan, born October 1303, died October 1304. Lady Eleanor de Bohan, born 17th of October 1304, died 1363. John de Bohan, the 5th Earl of Hereford, was born November 23rd, 1306, and died in 1335. Humphrey de Bohan, the 6th Earl of Hereford, born the 6th of December, 1309, died 1361. Margaret de Bohan, the second Countess of Devon, born the 3rd of April, 1311-1391, was the Dubai Dozen's 19th great-grandmother. William de Bohan, the first Earl of Northampton, was born in 1312, lived until 1360. Edward de Bohan, who was the twin of Willem, born in 1312, died in 1334. Elias de Bohan, born 1314, and died sometime after 1322. He is mentioned in his father's will. Isabel de Bohan, who was born and died May 5, 1316, along with her mother, Elizabeth Rudlin, Dubé Dozen's 20th great-grandma. King Edward I was the 21st great-grandfather to the Dubé Dozen. He was born 17th of June, 1239, died 7th of July, 1307. Edward I, also known as Edward Longshanks and the Hammer of the Scots, in Latin it's Melius Scotatorum, was the King of England from 1272 to 1307. Before his uh, accession to the throne, he was commonly referred to as the Lord Edward, the first son of Henry III, Edward, was involved from an early age in the political intrigues of his father's reign, which included an outright rebellion by the English barons. In 1259, he briefly sided with a baronial reform movement, supporting the provisions of Oxford. After reconciliation with his father, however, he remained loyal throughout the subsequent armed conflict, known as the Second Barons' War. After the Battle of Luz, Edward was hostage to the rebellious barons, but escaped after a few months and defeated the baronial leader, Simon de Montfort, at the Battle of Evesham in 1265. Within two years, the rebellion was extinguished and, the, and England pacified. Edward joined the Ninth Crusade to the Holy Land. The crusade accomplished little, and Edward was on his way home in 1272 when he was informed that his father had died. Making a slow return, he reached England in 1274 and was crowned at Westminster Abbey on the 19th of August. He spent much of his reign reforming royal administration and common law. Through an extensive legal inquiry, Edward investigated the tenure of various feudal liberties. While the law was reformed through a series of statutes regulating criminal and property law. Increasingly, however, Edward's attention was drawn towards military affairs. After suppressing a minor rebellion in Wales in 1276, to 77, Edward responded to a second rebellion in 1282-83 with a full-scale war of conquest. After a successful campaign, Edward subjected Wales to the English rule, built a series of castles and towns in the countryside, and settled them with English people. Next, his efforts were directed towards Scotland. Initially invited to arbitrate a succession dispute, Edward claimed feudal reign over the kingdom. The war that followed continued after Edward's death, even though the English seemed victorious at several points. Simultaneously, Edward I found himself at war with France, a Scottish ally after the French King Philip IV had confiscated the Duchy of Aquitaine, which until then had been held in, person, in a personal union with the Kingdom of England. Although Edward recovered his duchy, this conflict relieved English military pressure against Scotland. At the same time, there were problems at home though. In the mid-1290s, extensive military campaigns required high levels of taxation, and Edward met with both lay and ecclesiastical opposition. 
These crises were initially averted, but issues maintained unsettled. When the king died in 1307, he left it to his son Edward II, an ongoing war with Scotland and many financial and political problems. Edward I was a tall man, six foot two for his era, hence the nickname Longshanks. He was temperamental, and this, along with his height, made him an intimidating man, and he often instilled fear in his contemporaries. Nevertheless, he held the respect of his subjects for the way he embodied the medieval ideal of kingship as a soldier and administrator and a man of faith. Modern historians are divided on their assessment of King of the First. While some have praised him for his contributions to the law and administration, others have criticized him for his uncompromising attitude towards his nobility. Currently, Edward I is credited with many accomplishments during his reign, including restoring royal authority after the reign of Henry III, establishing Parliament as a permanent institution and thereby also a functional system for raising taxes and reforming the law through statutes. At the same time, he is also often criticized for other actions, such as his brutal conduct towards the Welsh and Scots and issuing the Edict of Expulsion in 1290, by which the Jews were expelled from England. The Edict remained in effect for the rest of the Middle Ages, and it was over 350 years until it was formally overturned under Oliver, under Oliver Cromwell in 1657. King Edward I had eight children with his queen, Eleanor of Castile. His eighth child, Elizabeth of Rutland, became the Dubé Dozen's 20th great grandmother. I hope you enjoyed uh, part four, Kings and the Royal Gallery. Stay tuned for part five, coming soon. That'll be Kings of the Angevin Empire. We're gonna wrap up the last uh, 300 years, starting from about 980 AD to uh, the late 1200s, where you'll learn more about uh, the ancestors of the Dubé Dozen. I hope you had an enjoyable time watching this series. Stay tuned and we'll talk soon.